this problem we're looking at greatest common factors and we're looking at the greatest common factor that goes into this number and this one what's the largest factor and one way to think about it is to take each number and split it up into its coefficient and the variable that's what I'm doing here I'm just splitting them up All right same number I haven't changed anything I'm just looking at it in terms of the two parts that make the number so the idea now is that um, I've identified the coefficients. So the coefficients are 48 and 72. And I've identified the variables, which are x squared and x to the third. So in, in both cases, I'm going to look at the greatest common factor. And then I'm going to recombine all this stuff to make the greatest common factor that goes into, into both the variables and the coefficient. I'll talk a little bit about why that makes sense. So here, what goes into 48 and 72? And they give us two options, 12 and, and 24. Well, 12 does go into both numbers, but so does, so does 24, right? 24 times 3 is what? Well, that's 72. And 24 times 2 is what? Well, that's 48. So 24 is the G, excuse me, greatest common factor, 48 and 72. What about x to the second, x to the third? Well, the greatest common factor is x squared here. And let's talk about why. Um, let's say we had a number like, like, I don't know, um, 9. Well, think of that as, as x squared. Well, then x is 3, and that has to go into x squared, which is 9. But if we had x to the third, what would that be? That would be 27, right? 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So what goes into x to the third? Well, x goes into it, but so does x squared because x squared goes into x to the third um, x times, right? x squared times x is 27. And what I mean is x squared, which is 9, times x, which is 3, equals 27. But x to the third does not go into, right, x squared. Right? 27 is larger than 9, so it's a multiple of x to the third, which is 27, is a multiple of x squared, which is 9, but it's not a factor. It doesn't go into it. Same reasoning here. x squared times x will give me x to the third, and x squared times 1 will give me x squared. I couldn't, I could not use x to the third because x to the third times, well, I have times it by 1 over x to get x squared, and I'm not dealing with fractions here. I'm looking at what goes into both numbers um, evenly. Now I'm going to recombine these two to get 24x squared. And that's a cool part, I mean, it's a cool feature of a greatest common factor in numbers in general. Here I'm saying that if I split this number up into its parts, right, and I find the, f the greatest common factor that goes into those parts, these two first and then these two, and then I recombine them, right, each of the greatest factors of the parts multiplied will give you the greatest common factor of the total number, the product. And this is kind of a pretty basic idea in prime factorization in general. If you look at a number like uh, 24, and I say, well, that's like equal to 2 times 12, right? And that's equal to 3 times 4. And that's equal to 2 times 2. Well, here I've factored it out into its prime factors. Well, that just tells me that I've broken this part, this number up into the different factors it has. Here, like I've broken it up into its different components. And I said, well, then it's equal to, we have 2 over here and 3 and 2 and 2. Well, if I recombine everything by multiplying, I come back to 24 because 2 times 3 is 6, times 2 is 12, times 2 is 24. So I think of this kind of in the same way. We're breaking the number up into its parts, finding the greatest common factor between those parts, and then recombining by multiplying. And it, it works for all these problems. If you look at the next example, the greatest common factor of this number. Even less friendly, but that's okay. We're looking for um, a number that goes into all these parts, right? And the number that, when multiplied by another factor, will, get, will give us this number. So what are we doing? If we look at the options here, we can even see that really what, what only works here is, I think, choice A. Why? Because, well, we're factoring this, this number whatever it is, into two of its largest factors, right? We're, we're saying, what is the greatest common factor that goes into each of these parts? Well, it's 2n, 
and notice in all cases they're pulling out a 2n. Why? Because well, if we break it, each component here, 12n to the fifth, 8n to the third, and 6n, we break it, we have a 6, we have an 8, we have a 12. Oops. The greatest number that goes into 6, 8, and 12, the greatest common factor, is 2. And then we have n, and n to the third, and n to the fifth. Okay, well, what's the greatest common factor here? Well, it's got to be the variable to the smallest exponent. Just like before, we talked about how n can go into the, each of these, right? n times n squared is n to the third. n times n to the fourth is n to the fifth. So n is the one variable that can go into the others. So now we have 2 is our greatest common factor for the coefficients, and n is the greatest common factor for these. That's our greatest common factor. Now, they're asking us here to factor the expression. So in one part, in all of these, we have the greatest common factor. And then the other part, what we have is an expression when multiplied by the greatest common factor gives us this number. Right? Gives us this value. That's what we're looking for. We're saying rewrite this thing into two factors, one of which you use the greatest common factor, one of which is the greatest common factor. And A is the choice that works, I think, because we have 2n, two, <coughs> two excuse me, times 6 n to the fourth plus 4n. <coughs> Well, sorry, plus 4n squared plus 3. We distribute. 2n times 6n to the 4th is 12n to the 5th. 2n times 4n squared, that's, that's 8n to the 3rd. And 2n times 3, which is 6n. And that's exactly what we started with. So this is the correct choice. And I think I'm running out of time here, so I'll continue in another video.